impressive thing about the end of civilization is that you had this big complex society that did not have uh, strong indicators of a ruling class. You see it actually mm-hmm. in the non-residential architecture. There are very big things that require mm-hmm. lots and lots of human labor in the end of civilization. There's just no indication that those big things benefited a subset of people. It didn't have pyramids and it didn't have palaces and that all the all the energy was lavished on houses. And and that really that that really surprised him. And he wrote that right there in the preface. When he goes in, if you read the first report on his excavation, he doesn't actually start out describing the large uh, non-residential structures. He actually begins his whole report with a description of a house. It's a big, it's a big fancy house to be sure, but it's a house. It's also the sanitation um, system that they had. Um, Cause I know that like sanitation technology was really important for like reducing uh, disease, um, you know, everywhere around the world. Um, and I, I think you mentioned something about how it like, you know, it was an example of solving like collective action problems at scale. Uh, so, so could you talk about that? Like how, yeah. how like rare is the sort of sanitation uh, infrastructure that they had, you know, for a bronze age civilization? Oh, I mean, Indus, the Indus drainage system is completely unprecedented in the archaeological record before Indus times. Most houses had a well actually inside the house so they could provide their own fresh water into the house. What's interesting is that the houses, though they built their bathing platforms and their wells inside, albeit using a relatively standardized set of technologies, like uh, bricks of a particular size, uh, bricks that fit together in a particular way, they all fed into a common drainage system that seemed to work mm-hmm. between the houses. So there had to have been a sort of civic level organizational authority involved, mm-hmm. or that there was an emergent uh, sort of collective group involved in sort of putting together this uh, drainage system and presumably ensuring its maintenance. To me, it's just an example of uh of sort of an emergent an an emergent solution to a collective problem and so this is all very striking and uh, that got me thinking why well why did we move away from this why did we just leave all these questions about the sort of egalitarian nature of the end of civilization we just sort of left those questions sitting on the shelf and I'm, i'm hoping that i mean my aim with the article was to kind of get people back into those questions start yeah really dealing with the fact that you had this big complex society that did not have uh, strong indicators of a ruling class.